everybody, this is Adam, and again we're here at SDS in San Diego for the 47th annual event, and I'm thrilled to be with uh, Dr. Mark Gerdish from St. Francis Medical Center in Indianapolis, and as you know, we're answering uh, your questions that you put up on the blog, and we have a we have a great question from Scott, and it's all about technology, and it, how technology is impacting heart valves and heart valve surgery, and Scott writes in, um, Dr. Gerdish is going to be answering this great question. Um, I've heard about a new technology in which doctors can grow their own heart valves. What is the latest on this research? And right. Dr. Curtis, if you have any thoughts, we'd love to hear them. Absolutely. This is really, really exciting stuff right now because uh, we actually are on that path. Uh, and I guess there's different ways to look at it as far as uh, how far we are on it. We think we've actually made a fair amount of progress. And in fact, in humans, we have done some work where we've reconstructed portions of heart valves or portions of adjacent heart tissue using uh, what's called extracellular matrix. This is, this is basically tissue without the cells, completely decellularized, but with the framework in which cells live. And that uh, replacement is actually dynamic. In other words, it's not something we put in, it's a static patch, it stays the same forever. What happens is your cells are integrated into it that becomes repopulated with cells, with new cells, and as a, by, as a function of those cells being there, being present in the matrix, the cells actually do their job and will replace the matrix over time. So what you have implanted then eventually is replaced by the activity of your own cells. So those are pluripotential cells. As you know, any cell in your body can be any cell in your body. So the same cell in your eyeball can be the, soul, the cell in your big toe. They all have the same genetic information. So we have this. It becomes repopulated. It's your tissue and it's not a foreign body. So the impact of that is, over time, our expectation is that this is going to outlast previous devices and it will provide patients with something that they won't identify as foreign, won't induce inflammation. So that's what we've done so far. Now, on a more, uh, on, as far as the trajectory toward building an entire valve, we have started to do some, some work in animals and it's been very, very promising. Uh, and it, so much so that I feel like we've got the platform now that's going to launch us onto that technology. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. This is, these are huge steps. Sure. We're taking small steps toward it, but we've made some real solid progress with it. Some of the things I can't actually describe to you, I can't tell you about because they're, they're unique and they're not ready for prime time, but uh, I can tell you that we've, we have made a fair amount of progress with it. We've got that platform down and we're working hard to, to get to the point where we can grow about. Got it. Uh, so I have a, a follow-up question and I have a statement. Let's start with the question. Not to put you on the spot, but can you give any kind of estimate in where there might be something tangible in which the technology you're saying actually can regenerate a valve, a part of valve? Is it possible or is that just not, not yet? No, definitely a part of valve. And we've done that. Okay. I've got... Uh, roughly 60 patients that I've reconstructed some portion of the interior of the heart. Many times it's the valve, maybe many times it's part of the valve. Lately other surgeons have been doing that. Surgeons who are very well known for reconstructive, techni for reconstructive techniques in valve surgery are now adopting that with extracellular matrix. So the use of the matrix means that the patient's own cells are going to populate that portion of the tissue and they're not going to have that foreign body. So we've done that. Parts of valves have been repaired using this, this technology. The next step is to build a valve. Yeah. And like I said, we're kind of in the early phases of it, but we're, things are moving very quickly. Now that doesn't mean that next year there's going to be something, or even in two years. But compared to other technology of this nature, we're making progress a lot faster than we expected. And I don't think it's unreasonable to expect that in my career anyway, we're going to be able to, we're going to be able to replace a valve with a grown, a valve that grows, a valve that develops. Amazing.